uh, there is a uh, wide gap in this country between what we Very sorry, forgive me for interrupting. Ohio falls for Bill Clinton. Uh, according to our CBS News estimate, that's it. Game, set, match, it's over. We will have a new president of the United States. Uh, CBS News has never been wrong in making one of these calls in a presidential race. Underscore the word never. Our CBS News estimate is that with Ohio, uh, these are live pictures from Little Rock, Arkansas, where the uh, word will spread uh, faster than gossip in a small town that Ohio has dropped for Clinton. Bill Clinton will be the new president of the United States. Al Gore will be the new vice president of the United States. We estimate, look at the map now, everything in blue belongs to Bill Clinton. 286 electoral college votes at a rot gut minimum. George Bush has 64 electoral votes so far. Still a long way to go. Florida and Texas among the many states still out and there's 10 or 12 minutes before the polls close in Washington, Oregon, and California, among others. Now, Charlie, I'm very sorry to have interrupted you over there. I think you'll agree that for the Ohio call and putting Clinton over the top, uh, that was something we needed to do so. We'll be right back. Clinton, go or win, there will be a new president of the United States. Dan Rather, CBS. We'll be right back. Stay here with us. Well, here's Governor Clinton with his family. Let's just soak up the money. On this day, with high hopes and brave hearts, in massive numbers, the American people have voted to make a new beginning. This election is a clarion call for our country to face the challenges of the end of the Cold War and the beginning of the next century, to restore growth to our country and opportunity to our people, to empower our own people so that they can take more responsibility for their own lives, to face problems too long ignored from AIDS to the environment to the conversion of our economy from a defense to a domestic economic giant. And perhaps most important of all, to bring our people together as never before so that our diversity can be a source of strength in a world that is ever smaller, where everyone counts and everyone is a part of America's family. by thanking my family, my wife, without whom I would not be here tonight, and who I will be, I believe will be one of the greatest first ladies in the history of this republic.
I also want to say a special word of thanks to our daughter for putting up with our absence, for supporting our effort, for being brave in the face of adversity, and for reminding us every day about what this election is really all about. I want to thank my mother, my brother, my stepfather, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, my brothers-in-law, and my sister-in-law who carried this campaign across this country and stuck up for me when others were trying to put it down. I love them, and I thank them. I want to thank the people of this wonderful, small state. Time after time, when this campaign was about to be counted out, the Arkansas travelers exploded out of this state around the country to tell people the truth about what we had done here together, how we had pulled together, what we believed in, and what we could do as a nation. I had the best staff and cabinet you can imagine. They kept this state together. And even when we weren't here, we continued to lead the country in job growth and keeping taxes and spending down and in pulling the people of Arkansas together to show what we could do if the nation pulled together and moved forward too. I want to thank the people who were in that infamous group, the FOBs, the Friends of Bill and the Friends of Hillary. No person who ever sought this office was more aided by the Friends of a Lifetime, and I will never forget you. I want to thank the people in the new Democratic Party, headed by our Chairman Ron Brown, the new members of Congress, the new blood, the new direction that we are giving. And finally, I want to thank the members of my brilliant, aggressive, unconventional, but always winning campaign staff. They were unbelievable. I might a special word of thanks to two people who lost their lives in the course of this campaign, without whom we might not be here tonight. Our friends Paul Tully and Vic Razor, our prayers are with them. They're looking down on us tonight, and they're awful happy. Not very long ago, I received a telephone call from President Bush. It was it was a generous and forthcoming telephone call of real congratulations and an offer to work with me in keeping our democracy running in an effective and important transition. I want all of you to join with me tonight in expressing our gratitude to President Bush for his lifetime of public service, for the effort he made from the time he was a young soldier in World War II, to helping to bring about an end to the Cold War, to our victory in the Gulf War, to the grace with which he conceded the results of this election tonight in the finest American tradition. Let's give Mr. Bush and his family a hand. I heard tonight Mr. Perot's remarks and his offer to work with us I say to you, of all the things that he said, I think perhaps the most important that we understand here in the heartland of Arkansas is the need to reform the political system, to reduce the influence of special interest, and give more influence back to the kind of people that are in this crowd tonight, for the tens of thousands, and I will work with him to do that. And finally, let me say how profoundly indebted I am tonight beyond the folks at home, 
beyond the wonderful people who worked in this administration, the Lieutenant Governor and others to keep our government going, beyond all the others, I have to say a special word of thanks to my magnificent running mate, Senator Al Gore, and his family. Tipper, Hillary, and I have become friends. I admire them for what they stand for. They're enjoyable to be with. They believe in our country. Al Gore is a man of almost unparalleled combination of intelligence, commitment, compassion, and concern to the people of this country, to our obligation to preserve our environment, to our duty to promote freedom and peace in the world. And together, we're going to do our best to give you a new partnership for a new America. I want to thank Al's children, his brother-in-law, and his wonderful parents. They made about as many votes in some states as we did. I think we carried every state that Senator and Mrs. Gore campaigned in. Their percentage was the best of all. I want to say that we have established a partnership in this campaign that we will continue into this new administration. For if we have learned anything in the world today, it is that we can accomplish more by teamwork, by working together, by bringing out the best and all the people that we seek. And we will seek the best and most able and most committed people throughout this country to be a part of our team. We will ask the Democrats who believe in our cause to come forward, but we will look to among the ranks of independents and Republicans who are willing to roll up their sleeves, be a part of a new partnership, and get on with the business of dealing with this nation's problems. I remind you again tonight, my fellow Americans, that this victory was more than a victory of party. It was a victory for the people who work hard and play by the rules a victory for the people who feel left out and left behind but want to do better, a victory for the people who are ready to compete and win in the global economy but who need a government that offers a hand up, not a hand out. That is what we offer, and that is what tomorrow we will begin to work to provide to all of you. Today, the steel worker and the sonographer, the teacher and the nurse, had as much power in the mystery of our democracy as the president, the billionaire, and the governor. You all spoke with equal voices for change. And tomorrow, we will try to give you that. You can trust us to wake up every day remembering the people we saw in the bus trips, the people we saw in the town meetings, the people we touched at the rallies, the people who had never voted before, the people who hadn't voted in 20 years, the people who never voted for a Democrat, the people who had given up hope, all of them together are saying, we want our future back, and I intend to help give it to you. I say to all of those who voted for us, this was a remarkable coalition for change. Many of you had to put aside this or that personal ambition to be a part of a broad, deep, commitment to change this country. I ask you to keep that commitment as we move from election to governing. We need more than ever for those of you who said, let's put the public interest over personal interest to keep it right there for four years so we can turn this country around. I say to all those who voted for Mr. Bush or Mr. Perot, those who voted for the president, those who voted for Ross Perot, I know you love your country too. I ask you to listen to the voice of your leaders. I ask you to join with us in creating a reunited states, a united country with a new sense of patriotism to face the challenges of this new time. We need your help too, and we will do our best to deserve it. When we seek to offer young people the opportunity to borrow the money they need to go to college, and the challenge to pay it back through national service, when we challenge the insurance companies, the drug companies, 
the providers and the consumers, the government to give us a new health care system, when we offer those on welfare new opportunity and the challenge to move to work, when we ask companies to take the incentives we offer to put American people to work and export American products, not American jobs, all of this is a part of a new patriotism to lift our people up and enable all of us to live up to the fullest of our potential. I accept tonight the responsibility that you have given me to be the leader of this, the greatest country in human history. I accept it with a full heart, heart and a joyous spirit. But I ask you to be Americans again, too. To be interested not just in getting, but in giving, not just in placing blame, but now in assuming responsibility, not just in looking out for yourselves, but in looking out for others, too. In this very place, one year and one month ago today, I said, we need more than new laws, new promises, or new programs. We need a new spirit of community, a sense that we're all in this together. If we have no sense of community, the American dream will continue to wither. Our destiny is bound up with the destiny of every American. We're all in this together, and we will rise or fall together. That has been my message to the American people for the past 13 months, and it will be my message for the next four years. Together, we can do it. Together, we can make the country that we love, everything it was meant to be. I still believe in a place called home. God bless America. Thank you all. A victorious Governor Bill Clinton. New blood, a new direction, as he put it.